Smoke and Tobacco's coverage of the 2023 PCA Trade Show and Convention is brought to you by Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars. What's going on, everybody? Matt Tobacco from SmokingTobacco.com. I'm here at PCA 2023 with coverage brought to you by Drew Estate. I am at the Roma Craft Tobacco booth with Mike Rosales. Mike, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm tired. It's the bitter end, but you're still standing. We're still here. Yeah, the uh, you know you can stand on the on the padded carpet. That will help your feet. Oh yeah, yeah. it makes a difference. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so it's uh, I'm telling you, with no padding, it's worse. I don't know how why they do it, but it's horrible. They should. It's it's the cheapest carpet I've ever seen. So you have to go upgrade a carpet padding. That's the that's the key. My feet are killing me too. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of walking. How many miles do you think you walked? I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah? I don't know. Because you, you zig and zag. You don't just go booth to booth, right? No, it's back and forth, yeah. front to back, left to right. Yeah. It's everywhere. You're like hitting switches on the 64. Yeah. Up and down, back to side to side. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. The, uh, so what else going on? I definitely got my steps in. But uh, no, we're here at Roma Craft to back. We, uh, I know you guys have a new cigar that you're showcasing We have here. a couple. You have a couple. Yeah. Um, but one of which is the 1920, the Volstead. Good. I'm glad you thought you were going to ask me about this one I have in my hand. Well, I'll ask about that after. We're not talking about that. Oh, you're not talking no, about know, it? I don't know. I just that's I am still going to ask. Okay. <laughs> right. No, you guys had a pre-release of it. Yes. Um, I was actually with you and Skip up in New Hampshire, two guys smoke yes. shop, um, you, when that was first went on sale. And I remember you guys saying that there was a slight change in the Sumatra wrapper from the pre-release to the final release. Correct. Tell me a little bit about that. Why was that done and kind of... When well, I think the, the quality, so a couple of things, right? So whenever you're, you're blending the, the filler components of the cigar and, and you're working and you kind of nail that down, you, you make a certain amount to kind of see, you know, so I think in post-production we maybe did like, you know, 15,000, maybe not that much, 1,500, you know, 1,500 to kind of see like what, what the blend was going to be like, right? And so the... Um, and so during that process, as we're smoking, we got a we got a really we found a thicker, heavier, textured type of cigar that actually had a better supply line on it that we just really enjoyed. And so it was an improvement to it. And so that's what we decided to change it up with. So the pre-release during that was like the initial kind of let's see how this kind of goes. And so after they came out of the Scaparate, um, even before that, we'd already made a change, you know, pretty quickly during that process because you know the. And again, it's all about supply line. It's about the availability. You know, because I would say, you know, like like our Baca with the African Cameroon, um, you know, it, it it's you know it yields out a bunch of small cigars, and so right. you know you, you're really looking at okay, how do you keep this to make it you know repeatable and sustainable long term? So right, yeah, I mean I, I've smoked the pre-release and I thought it was pretty good. Actually, I smoked a couple. I I have a I got a bundle and I smoked a couple. They were good. I liked them. Very good. So now I'm excited to try this one and okay. kind of see the difference. Are you gonna have a clean palate to do it? I will. Okay. I will make sure. All right. Because I want to make sure it's it's sure. good to go for you. Well, you have the other one too. So you can smoke them side by side to kind of see the That's variation. Right. I still and have And that was some. kind of the idea. So you know, a lot of people don't know when we released the Wonderlust, we did the same thing. So you know, again, um, now there are people who will argue and say, well, I like the other one. It has a little bit more nuances. It's not as bold or heavier or, or richer and deeper right. in texture, or thickness, and you know, in the body. Um, however. For us, I think it's an improvement of the wrapper. It's a lot more consistent, and you can get, you know, again, the the thicker, heavier leaves and bigger leaves that can produce a little bit bigger cigar, and you know, all the other things you have to look at when you're in production. So. Absolutely. Um, now it's available in how many sizes? Is it three? No. Every cigar in the Intemperance portfolio comes in the same sizes in core line. Okay. The pre-release, the Senator Volstead, is a <clears throat> Excuse me. Is a is a limited edition size per se. So so okay. it's, when we say limited edition, it's like limited production size, right? So, but we do a you know four by forty six, four and a half by fifty two, the five by fifty perfecto. Um, we have the five by fifty six in the double robusto, and then we do the five and a quarter by fifty four in the bellicoso. So whether it's in temperance Connecticut, whether it's in temperance Brazilian, whether it's in temperance Habano and the whiskey rebellion. We're now in the Volstead. The core line sizes are the core line sizes. Oh, okay. So the same LE sizes, like Senator Volstead. So the five by fifty, the five by fifty-six box press, the four and a half by sixty. Uh, they will all be the same LE sizes in the limited production that we kind of do on an annual kind of where we drop two or three hundred boxes, if that, um, just to kind of you know 
just to offer a, a variation in the in the same cigar, a different variation in the in in the size, right? So, yeah. but the core line sizes will be the same. So now, the idea is is that, you know, when people go in and they're and they're basically setting up their their. Um, the assortment of cigars, like it'll be a little bit more uniform as far as now that it, you know, there's four different variations and availability in the wrap, and they're all different blends. That's what's kind of unique about the Intemperance portfolio, but it's now, you know, Connecticut, Brazilian, the, you know, the Habano, and now you have the, the, the Sumatra. Yeah, very cool. I mean, it's you guys have quite the portfolio going now. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's getting big. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's funny because a long time like we didn't have anything that was really new. You know, so you know for a long time it was just the Intemperance ECBA and Whiskey Rebellion. I'm sorry, ECBA, Pro Magnum, Aquitaine. Yep. And then you know I think in uh, 2017 we released Neanderthal, and then great cigar. Yeah, that's uh, it's a heavy hitter for us. Yeah. And then. The um, then we did Baca. Baca has not been as as a, a big of a production run as we would have liked to have had, and then uh, you know so then um, you know obviously now with the the Volstead that's going to be you know I think it, it again it, it's about what can you do repeatable and sustainable. That's our whole model, right? And again, the Intemperance portfolio is is a sub ten dollar cigar, so you know every you've been around this the showroom floor, uh, you've seen these prices go yeah. out of the roof. And so, you know, everything that we produce in the Intemperance portfolio is is a really, really good value. Like it's a, you know, so somebody wants to smoke three or four cigars a day, or, you know, or whatever that they're smoking throughout, you know, they can buy them and then not really feel like they're being gouged on the price. Absolutely, especially, you know, I've heard a lot of manufacturers that have introduced some cigars this year under that $10 price point sure. and said like, hey, like, look, last couple of years with inflation and other things you know people are a little more cautious of spending sure. money and having something that's a little bit more on the affordable side but yet a great quality product sure. yeah. is important right now and so it's well there's an elasticity in the marketplace where I think people you know on one hand you see guys come in and go well how good could it be for under ten dollars because they're they're okay with spending a little bit more money and that's okay too right if they can afford it god bless them they've earned it whatever but at the end of the day i also think there's a large consumer group that no one's really focusing on the guys that just want a really good cigar at a fair price right so and that's where the intemperance portfolio kind of comes in at it's long filler they're great they're unique and if you haven't tried them i think you should i think if you're if you're not you know if you're not a, you know if it's not in your wheelhouse or your or in your rotation i think that people should should really check them out absolutely yeah, yeah. so um, with that, the other cigar that we're we are showing today is the uh, Quid Quad Genario. So Quid Quad Genario. Everyone asked me how do you? Genario. Yeah. So <laughs> it's um, you know I think uh, people keep coming up as like Quinceanera, you know, or you know, or Guantanamera. You know, it's like no, it, it, you know, it's it. But basically, it means the fiftieth. Um, about uh, so we started working on that project when Skip was forty nine. Okay. He's about to be uh, fifty one. So it's been a long, tedious kind of journey down that, but it's, it actually led into the production of, some, of the Sumatra line. So while we were working with Ernie and their factory, you know, we really wanted to make a cigar that, you, you know, was a Dominican cigar, but tasted very Nicaraguan, full body-esque, you know, and so that's what we were able to kind of produce. And so uh, we worked with a lot of tobaccos that even Ernie doesn't really use, so we had to go out to, you know, and really source a lot of unique types of, of, of Dominican t tobacco to make this cigar. And uh, so we're we're planning on 2,000 boxes. We're not sure, but you know, worst case scenario, we'll have about 1,500 boxes. The retail on that, we didn't make it, but so there's the collaboration. It'll be $15 retail. Nice. Um, you know, but I think that you know, at the end of the day, there's going to you know, uh, we're hoping for 2,000 boxes, but I'm I'm prepared for 1,500. I don't know, like once they go through the sorting, and that'll probably start dropping around August 15th or so. Is like when we'll start shipping that out, hopefully. So, but that's all kind of done from their factory. It's the first cigar we've ever done outside of our of our factory. So, uh, like I said, when we were Skip was turning 50th, or he's turning 50, we know he's like, you know, let's let's do something unique. And so, uh, who would you want to work with? You know, if you had the chance, Carrillo said, let's do it. We went in there and kind of rolled our sleeves up, kind of went to work. And then while we were there, they kind of showed us how they, you know, cure and work with Sumatra, and that's kind of what led into the Volstead as being a viable option. And so it really was a really op good opportunity to, to learn from somebody who's been doing this a really long time. Absolutely. You know, it's always fun when you see, you know, different companies working together on yeah. projects and stuff. And well, it's fun. You know, I mean, you've seen a lot of these kind of things. You know, I think Dion did one with, uh, you know, Drew Estate back in the day, the, the Nosotros, and uh, I think you've seen, you know, I think Caldwell did one with Drew Estate, you know, and, and I, 
I don't know if those were meant to be full lines or if they were limited releases or whatever, but sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. And, and you know, this one was, again, for us, it's a little bit easier because it's a one and done, but it was a really fun project. I enjoyed it and I wish, I hope that it opens up to some other opportunities because I, it's, it's, again, we have our processes and they have theirs and you get a chance to learn and kind of see how they do it. And that's a, that's a you know, it's, it's eye-opening. You know, I mean, you, it's one thing to go into a tour and kind of say, hey, this is where we do our bodega, this is where we do this. But when you actually get into the production side of it, and, and the process side of it, that's where it's it's really, it's fun for me, you know. Absolutely. Now, the last thing I'm going to ask is about that cigar that you are smoking right now. This? Since you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> this is called the Frenchie. So it's an inside-out saber tooth. Oh, okay. Um, so this is, this is the thing that I, I love and hate about limited editions is like, um, when you get done with your production and you're changing from one brand to another, you'll have some tobacco that's left over that's kind of remaining and so you kind of figure out so so like you know black irish for example so if you're if you're transitioning or saber tooth you're transitioning from one going into another um and you have some some you know you have some material that you got to consume so it led into this inside out uh saber tooth which is so it's more connecticut and some habano yep uh same filler as cro magnon aquitaine but it's uh, it's it's limited. I want to say we probably have you know maybe 140 something boxes of it. I'm not really sure how we're going to use it. Maybe we'll use it for events. But uh, so we're still trying to figure that out. Um, but I, it, so it's been you know people like what's 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 you know what's the Frenchie about? People don't know John D. Oliver is uh, you know they call him Frenchie because of his last name. Um, but the Aquitaine is a region of France where they found the first Cro-Magnon skull in, the, in, it's in, in this cave. Anyways, it was in France. The guy who found the skull, I believe, was French. Anyway, so there's a lot of, a lot of you know, again, these underlying kind of, kind of themes that go into our brands, right? So yeah. it's fun. It's fun. It is fun. You guys do a great job. You have a great time. You have some great cigars. Sure, and thank you. You got a good theme going on. I like it. We try, it. man. You know, I think that the, um, I think you know people who kind of get into the brand and get invested and, and kind of dive into it. It's really fun for them and unique. You know, it's uh, it's a little different than just saying here's my Toro or here's my Robusto or here's sure. my you know um, Corona, double Corona like that. That's uh, so. But when you kind of kind of peel back the layers and you invest your time into the brand and try to understand what's going on, it can be a little confusing at first. But then when you kind of scale it back and kind of look at it, you go, well, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, so yeah. we try. Well, um, sorry, I almost called you Skip. That's okay. That would have been a fuck up. Yeah, no, <laughs> Mike. Really fucked that up. So. <laughs> Mike, thank you for talking with My us pleasure. today. My yeah. um, Good luck with everything you guys Appreciate have going it on. Very much. And uh, we'll see you out there. All right, take care, guys. Bye, guys.